Hey everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also is getting prepped for the big, big trip. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs. That is right. Next week, a week from right now, when I post my Mondays, I will be somewhere in Taipei, Taiwan. That's right. I'm actually getting ready to take off and do a huge Taiwan and Hong Kong trip. Now, mainly Taiwan. I'm gonna be there for 10 days total across the two, but only two of those are gonna be actually in Hong Kong. I'll be making some, some retail shop visits and just check out some cool stuff there on Airsoft Street or Gun Street, as they call it, in Hong Kong. And then, of course, a bunch of factory visits in Taipei, Taiwan. So if there's anywhere you want me to go visit, any big shop, if you guys are from Hong Kong and you know stuff, or even Taiwan, uh, Taipei and Taichung specifically are the two cities I'll be spending some time in, please let me know. I would love to know. And, and if you guys are there, love to meet you. Seriously, I'd like definitely meet up. I will be there on Saturday. The second Saturday is like the 22nd, I think is the date on that, uh, was of April of 2017. If you guys are watching this in the future, it's when I'll be in the Hong Kong area. I'll be there actually be flying in on Friday and staying there through Saturday. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Uh, I'll let you guys get updated on that more when I go around to it. Before we get into the questions, I have one more thing to add here. Usually I'm not one to promote like giveaway type stuff on here outside of what I do. Like if I can do a giveaway and I like tell you to go to a website and check something out. But this is pretty neat uh, just because of the prize. So here's something you guys do in this full auto lotto. So if you buy something, you, you get added to the lotto. Also, you can actually sign up without it. There's actually a way if you go to the page, and I'll put a link to the, the page over there below. The grand prize, they're gonna be doing like a giveaway. It's kind of like a free gift with purchase. Uh, kind of you're entered into this little giveaway thing is the Galactac armor, the stuff that I wore in the game at the GI, the BB Wars game last year, the one we did up in NorCal. It is the coolest thing. I mean, these things take forever to order. They, they're special built, and these are one of the custom GI ones. So that is a killer killer prize. Usually I'm not like said one to go, oh yeah, it's a free gun or free something like this, go sign up. You know, everybody's kind of doing that. But because you can win Galactech armor, which is insane, uh, this one is one that has definitely got my attention. So anyway, enough of that. I just want to kind of get you guys up to date on that too and, and a little filled in on that in case you guys were interested in getting your own Galactech armor set or at least a chance to do it. But anyway, enough of that. Let's jump on into what you're really here for and that is your questions in the Tipman mail call. The Strike Eagle One writes, Hey Jonathan, I have a question about the G&G Top Tech series. I know they're high end, but there isn't much info or reviews out there on them. What are your thoughts on them and where can I find good information on them? You know, it's a challenge, especially if you guys live in North America. I've found that there are a lot of premium brands here in the United States and a lot of companies, uh, retailers, choose not to carry the Top Tech. I don't know why. I don't understand why. There's some really good products. Don't get me wrong. G&G makes some great stuff. But again, when you look at that north of $300 price point on guns, you pretty much find yourself looking at VFC like Avalon, the new Avalon series, or the licensed stuff like their HK stuff. Um, also looking at Crytax. Those are usually top of the pile when it comes to that north of 300 You just don't see G&G. &G. And I think a lot of the reason is, one, there are so many in that area. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I also think, two, that G&G &G has done such an amazing job building up a reputation for having a fantastic budget to mid-level gun. Their, their GC series, their intermediate series like that, um, which is kind of where the Raider falls or the uh, combat machine, kind of in that realm. And those, they're just known for it. I mean, people pick them up. They work great. They last forever. I, I think they've just built a brand around that. And a lot of people don't realize, including shop owners, they've got this top tech line, which is their premium end. And they make some really cool guns, some very unique guns, World War II stuff, and some high-end M4s that I think are often overlooked. Uh, when it comes to reviews and information about them, I would try to start looking outside of the US maybe for videos. I think in Europe, you're gonna find a better uh, reach on that, and also in Asia. I think the Top Tech series in both of those markets are a lot more popular than in the US, also in South America and Central America, especially South America. You look around like some Chilean airsoft channels, things like that, you might have some really good luck there as well. So kind of look around those areas, wander outside the US and on a footnote on that, I'm gonna start doing some more uh, top tech reviews for you guys. Since obviously you're asking here, there, there's a need, I'm gonna start trying to get more of those in, reach out to G&G, &G, see if I can get some of those, or just reach out to some shops around here. I do have a shop in town that is actually one of the largest G&G &G dealers. May go over there and poach a few things off the wall, steal them for a few days, and, and give you guys a full rundown. So stay tuned on that. Nicholas Adair writes, I've heard that Crytek MOSFETs start to break. If you use a LiPo with a discharge higher than 15C, is this true? I have an 11.1 with a discharge of 20C, and I don't wanna break my 
MOSFET and replace it. Okay, so let me give you a quick breakdown on this. Uh, Crytac and all the other companies are gonna recommend a 15C discharge battery. That's gonna be the recommended battery to use. And typically one they say they're like, hey, this is where we're gonna warranty our work. Now, when you have a 20C battery, typically a 15C is hard rated at 15, but it's actually like a 10 to 20 C rating. They have a range. If you look at a lot of batteries, they will give you a C rating range at times. Some batteries do give you the range, some give you an absolute number. So at your 20, you're totally fine. I'm gonna tell you right now, at 20 C over 15 C, you're not gonna do anything to cause an issue. Now, if you had like a 50 C or a 60 C battery, then I might be concerned. Uh, with that in mind too, most of my LiPo batteries I've been running on my Crytac that I've had for years are 25 to 35 C or 35 to 40. They're up there. They're almost, they're more than double the rated amount. I will tell you that right now. And personally for me, I have not had an issue at all with mine. The MOSFET that Crytek puts in their guns is a very robust MOSFET and it can handle a lot of current. Uh, I think they set that 15C rating for their warranty side, but as for burning it up, if you're gonna throw a 20 on it, you're fine. I've been running like 25s, 30s, 35s, whatever on average, kind of that mid number on them. And I've not had a single issue, not burning out, no over voltage, nothing like that, nothing locking up. So for me, I say you're totally good to go. But again, from the warranty, like in the first 90 days or however long you have, I think 60 days or whatever the warranty is on a Crytac, I'd stick with maybe the 15 if you really care about that warranty. But at the end of the day, I've had no issues from day one running out with a higher C LiPo. Antor is right. Hey, Jonathan, new to your channel and I love it. Question, is it safe to let your pistol mag hit the ground from say about chest height? Will the impact damage the mag or is it built to withstand the fall? For me, I wouldn't do it. Uh, Airsoft pistol mags are not really designed. Hang on, I'm gonna go over this way real quick. I'm back, did you miss me? So I just had a pistol sitting off camera over here that I was doing for another video I shot. Um, so yeah, this plastic on this cap is not gonna be the best. And remember, in Airsoft, this mag is solid metal and it weighs nearly as much as a real firearm pistol loaded to the gills. When you drop a firearm magazine, when you're done with it, it's empty. It doesn't weigh a fraction of what this thing weighs. So you've got a lot of weight coming down and hitting the ground. So at first you will probably crack this cap, my guess, even at the best plastic, unless they have like nylon fiber reinforced crazy DuPont Zytel or something like that. Um, you're probably gonna have some cracked issues. I mean, this is on a KWA, this comes from HK45. Um, and I guarantee if I drop this in a hard surface like a rock, it'd break that in a second. The other concern, which makes things very different from an airsoft mag from like a real mag, when you see guys drop the mag in the movies and they do the quick reload and go on, is there is a O-ring right here on the bottom. There's also an O-ring here and a cup seal here and this plastic little top here that's nice and I'm gonna try to focus on it if my camera will do it. Maybe right there, that little lip. Um, those all, like when it falls, it could go down that way and crack it. It can hit the side, it can damage this valve. A lot of times the valve, like this one is a brass and then another different metal material. It can rip this little seal here and that seal mates up to actually the inside of your gun. So there needs to be a good seal there for gas transfer. You can crack the follower. It's basically bottom line. There's a lot of things you can do to this to mess it up by dropping it. Uh, so I would absolutely, if any choice in the matter, don't do it. Now, if you wanna practice fast reloads because you're using like an airsoft gun as a tool, uh, put some pedals down or something, no problem at all. But dropping this on hard ground, I wouldn't make a habit of it simply because O-rings are one thing, you would probably have an issue with the leak in the mag. I'm talking about the big O-rings, not the little one here and this little hole here for the fill. So you'll have that kind of problem, but more so you're, you're gonna end up buying a lot of mags. And I'll be honest, while these aren't cheap, I mean, this is a pretty pricey pistol in of itself, these mags are super expensive in relation to what they cost me. Like, I think this is like a $40 mag or something like that for these. So I treat them like gold when it comes to that. I do them like, I take them out, I, I tuck them in there. As cool as it would be to do the mag, quick mag change, drop it and go, I'd stick with just stuffing them back in the pouch. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from actually a post on the comments from last week. And again, remember, I'm asking you guys and gals for good recommendations for other channels. I've been finding a ton. You're awesome. Please keep that up in the comment section as well as your questions. But this one comes from a channel called Rebel Axa. I think it's Rebel Axa is how you're gonna pronounce it. And she is actually a Belgian YouTuber, kind of new to the scene, starting to build already, uh, has like about 500 subs at the time of this. And she's doing a great mix on her channel. She's got reviews, she's got some gameplay and some stuff going on. What I 
particularly found, I've got a couple videos here. First off, her gameplay. Uh, she's actually at a pretty cool site. I think this is super neat. It's actually a historical fort there in Belgium, um, as well as a good shooting test of one of her guns. We were talking about G&G &G earlier in this uh, the video here with one of the questions, and here she is with a G&G &G gun doing a very good range test. One of those tests that actually I don't even do on my videos and going into great detail in a short format. It's like two minutes actually knocking it out and showing you the accuracy of her rifle at different ranges using good targets. So I think this channel has a ton of potentials. Her stuff already is great. It earned a subscribe even before I found the comment. I had already subbed to it from, uh, I think from a different one somebody had recommended from last week. So if you did recommend it, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name and, and tell you that you did, but thank you for doing it. And uh, she's really going to go somewhere, I think. Right now, just a handful of videos on there, but I think coming soon, you're going to see that channel grow. She is posting regularly, which I do like. So also, like I said before, if you guys do have a channel yourselves or you know of one that I just haven't mentioned yet here on Mondays with the, uh, the video recommendation of the week, put it in the comment section below, and I would love to get you guys highlighted here on the show. All right, well, that's it for this week. As always, thank you so much for hanging out here, and thank you for being so cool in the comment section and helping each other out. I can never answer every question but you do such an amazing job down there. Also, don't forget, comments down there on the next show. And if it's your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe. Hit the old subscribe button down there in the corner, and then you'll be up to date with gameplay, reviews, and of course, Monday's Q&A every single Monday. I try to get three videos up every single week. So guys, until next week, go out, have some fun, play some airsoft, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.